600, 626. Let's all stand up as the ladies come down. 626. Everybody be seated except for ladies. I want all you ladies to remain standing just for a second. Because I got some young men that's got something they want to bring to you. I've got a gift for all of our ladies. And so guys, let's go ahead and share with all of our ladies. You gotta hurry. Where'd you get that pink shirt? Where'd you get those pink shoes? Come on, guys. I appreciate that. All of our late Jeremiah's, he's, he's, our, he's our color coordinator. I'm surprised his hair's not pink. I tease him a lot. Uh, but God bless you. I'm thankful. Every one of you ladies. Got a bookmarker I want to share with you. And uh, use this for you ladies. Uh, in your Bibles as you study the scriptures. And uh, so that's just great. There you go. Good job. Very good. Now, hurry, Darius. My wife would like me to have your pink tie. She said I should wear a pink tie today. Now, I want all of the mothers to remain standing. All the mothers remain standing. So you ladies may be seated, and all of my mothers stand. And so I want to say thank you. You better sit down back there. I'm going to come back and hit you. And uh, that's right. You better get up, Mom. She was letting him proxy for her. And... Uh, but ladies, thank you so much. I hope you have a great Mother's Day. Don, good to see you. God bless you. God. Let's give them a hand. Thank you, moms. Amen. Amen. Now, we always like to recognize our mothers on Mother's Day, and I'd like to share uh, a little something with uh, some mothers. And if I say special mothers, I would be... Uh, incorrect because all of you are special and I'm thankful for you but I'd like to find out the mother that brought the most children to church today the most children in church today with you right here at Tabernacle Baptist Church 
And so as any mothers here, you've got five children in church at Tabernacle today. Any mothers got five children in church or more? You raise your hand so I can see you. Got one back there, got one right here. All right, let's see. Is that just the two? Just the two? All right, let me start back in the back. And uh, Joanna, how many you got here today? Six. Six. And how many do you have here today? Nine. <laughs> you were close. <laughs> Amen. Uh, Marcus, help me out right here. And uh, Tom, escort her down here. And uh, this is uh, Marjorie. And uh, she's got nine children here today. Yeah, God bless her. You might have to stand there and hold her up. So stand right here, Marjorie. Yeah. Come stand right here. Now, secondly, I'd like to find out who the mother is that gave birth to the most children. You gave birth to the most children. So how many of you mothers have five children? Well, we, we're at nine right here. And Sherlanda's back there at six. So how many of you gave birth to six children or more? Would you stand up? Six children or more? Oh, wow. Let's see. We got a couple of these. She has nine? Has nine. All right. So let's see here. We got nine here. All right. Sister Benella got six. And Sherlanda's got six back there. And we'll come down here to Michelle. Nine. Oh, we got a tie. Somebody's got to have a baby real quick. No, 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 no. Jeremy, step back there and escort Michelle down. And Steve, if you if escort her down. Our mothers with given, given birth to the most children today. We've got a trio of nine. I want to just think about this. If those three mothers brought their children to church, we'd have 30 in three families. That's great, isn't it? Any church would like to have them as part of it. And so I'm happy about this. This is good. This is good. And uh, now I'd like to find out who our oldest mother is. And uh, I don't know. I get in trouble with this all the time. But uh, how many of you mothers are, let me, let me jump to a big number. You're 85 or older. You're 85 or older. Just raise your hand. You don't have to stand up. We've got, we got one back there. Is there another one? 85 or older? We only got one? I'm not even going to tell you how old she is. Leon, help me back there and escort Sister Janice up here. And uh, Janice, everybody wants to know how old she is. How young are you? 91, she says. Piece of cake. Bring her right over here, Leon, beside me. That is wonderful. Let's get a good picture of them. And, uh, ladies, you got a picture of all of them? Uh, come back this way. There you go. There you go. Stand right there beside them, Brenda. All righty. Thank you all so much. God bless you. You may be seated. I am thankful so much for all of you. And I've got a bouquet up here that I would like to share with someone that means a lot to us because she's been around the ministry for a number of years. She's raised children in this ministry. 
She has given herself in this ministry. She and her family have given herself in, their, in this ministry. And more about that, but I really, really am thankful that uh, over 20 years ago that God brought the Newman family to Tabernacle Baptist Church. And so Kathleen Newman, would you come? And Caleb, would you escort her down? They have, uh, they have served, the entire family have served here relentlessly, and we're very thankful for the Newman family, and with Josh just getting married yesterday, and here is Caleb. If you want to know what a good-looking Marine looks like, I, I haven't seen one yet, but there's Caleb. <laughs> and I appreciate his service in the Marine Corps, so God bless you, Sister Kathleen. <laughs> I'm always teasing and joking about things. I better be careful. <laughs> These military guys, they, huh? And girls. And girls they, I get in trouble. Ushers come with their offering trays. Give us an opportunity to take part in our tithes and our offerings. And again, thank you, each and every one. God bless you. And I want to say thank you for your gifts uh, every Sunday. And I appreciate your faithfulness in giving, and I pray God richly bless you. Uh, we have folks that are acquaintances with our ministry that send offerings periodically, and I'm thankful for that. Uh, we have shut-ins, and I have a shut-in right here in my pocket. They're unable to come to church, but yet they send their offerings in, and I'm very thankful for them. And they pray for us. And one of the reasons why we have live stream is so that some of those folks can join our services. And uh, I really am thankful. But, uh, you know, it's your weekly giving that keeps our doors open and keeps us going. And it's very important. Uh, we honor the Lord with our first fruits of uh, how he has prospered us. And he has, he has promised that he would prosper us if we honor him. And some people have bags with holes in them. And uh, they don't honor the Lord, and God don't sew your holes up. And so let me just encourage you to honor the Lord with that which he has given to you. My Father, I do thank you for the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank you for mothers, Lord, the sweet memories I have of my mom. And, uh, Lord, uh, I know that many, many, all of us uh, whose moms are not here, we miss them, and we're thankful for them. And I'm glad that we have a time when we honor our mothers. And, Lord, they deserve honor. And I ask you that you would help us. May we have the right relationships with our mothers. Lord, I pray that you'd help us to recognize these mothers in our lives. Uh, I pray that you'd help us to draw from their experiences and uh, help us. Lord, I pray your blessings upon our gifts this morning. May they be exactly what you would be pleased with, and we would be thankful. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.
495, 495. We're gonna be singing the first and the last of 495. Stand up with me, sing with me. I am so glad that I'm fallen and have tell of his love in a book he has. church for children that came with moms and dads and so if you're between the ages of four and ten parents it's not mandatory that your children leave but if you'd like for them to they're right on the other side of this wall right here after the service you'll go right out this door and uh, you turn and they'll be waiting for you right there in the hallway or in the classroom and you can collect them in the hallway so young folks four to ten you all come right now if you're going over to junior church and uh Workers are over there, and I appreciate the workers and all the help that's there. Now, you may be seated. I appreciate your love for missions and for people that serve in other countries. And may God richly bless you for it and for preachers and, and uh, all that you do. I'm thankful. I mentioned Luxon and uh, his graduation and off to Haiti he'll be going and it's great to have Zam with us but there's always a need and the need many times can be met through finances and it's just like Brother Bertram wanting to build that building he was unable to get that building built until he had the finances to buy the material and uh, I'm thankful for that uh, the, the school is being built in uh, Makunji, West Africa, it could not be built until the funds uh, came in where we could buy the material to build that. And Brother Zam will tell you the same thing. Money's not everything. And the love of money is the root of all evil. We're just saying that the money is that means of exchange where we might be able to buy material and things that are needed. Luxon will have some great needs as he goes to Haiti. And uh, I appreciate Brother Andrea Ray and uh, those that are working with her to put on a fashion show or dresses for Haiti and that's going to be this Thursday night and it's going to be what is the address uh, Andrea okay it's the Excellent, excellent. Uh, yes, 12, uh, 12,100 West Colonial Drive, the Bella Room, and uh, that is in uh, Winter Garden. Now, as I said earlier, <laughs> I shouldn't have said this. Andre, I told him, I said, if you can't come, we don't care. We want your money. Amen. <laughs> Fair Garden. And it's modest apparel. It's, it's things, and it's uh, folks here that will be doing this. And if you'd like to find out a little bit more, you can go to Fair Garden Academy, and uh, that's uh, F A I R E in Haiti, and you can see a little bit more there. 
But uh, if you'd like to buy a ticket, they have tickets available. They're $10. All the proceeds, everything that is raised, it is going to uh, Haiti. You're all going to sing? Uh, come on up. And uh, so uh, participate in that. If you can, take part in it. And I'm, I'm thankful for what is being done. Now, I want you to take your Bible and find with me two passages of Scripture. One passage found in Proverbs chapter 31. This chapter is probably going to be read more today in churches and any other scriptures that are put together. And so a uh, virtuous woman, a, a mother, her children rise and call her blessed. I'm not going that far today. I've got several things. And I've entitled my message, Countdown on Mother's Day. And uh, just a few points that I want to share with you. But we'll read from Proverbs chapter 31 and from 1 Timothy. And so you find 1 Timothy over in the New Testament. A little bit easier to find than Proverbs. Uh, excuse me, a little harder to find than Proverbs. But we got a mother and daughters that are going to sing for us right now. She's coming to give me a no, hug. Taking part of oh, I'm sorry. 
Well, there goes my bubble again. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 31. Let's go there first. Proverbs chapter 31, as I share just a few simple thoughts with you about countdown on Mother's Day. You'll understand a little bit more about my title. I talked about it. I thought about it. Uh, I said, Lord, uh, you know, I don't want to be cute. Uh, I don't, wanna, don't know exactly what to say, how to say. And I said, well, I'll just say count down on Mother's Day. Count a few things down. Proverbs chapter 31. The Bible says in verse number 1, the words of King Lemuel, the prophecy that his mother taught him. Mother, let me just say thank you for that which you do in trying to teach your children the Word of God, the prophecy of which she taught him. Didn't say that she was a prophet. Said that she taught him prophecies. She taught him something that others may have seen and heard and proclaimed. And we need mothers that will stand or sit and tell their children, teach their children about the Word of God, like Timothy's mother and grandmother and what they did. Notice what else she said. Said, what my son and what the son of my womb and what the son of my vows. Now she goes into giving some instructions on what the child should not. But I want to just stop there in verse number two. And she said that you're my son. Okay, you're my son. You came from my loins. You came from my womb. You, came, you took life from me. And then she says, the son of my vows. This mother had made some promises somewhere along the way. I'm reminded of Hannah, Samuel's mother. And she was barren and she said, Lord, if you'll give me a male child, I'll lend him to you all the days of his life. And the Bible says that when the days came that he was weaned from his mother, that she took him back to the temple and she gave him to the high priest there, Eli, to be, her ser be his servant. And said, here he is. I promised God that I would do this, and now I am fulfilling my promise. Oh, how we need women that will make vows and promises unto God and keep those promises, men and women. Over in 1 Timothy chapter 5, 1 Timothy chapter 5, Paul is instructing Timothy about some things in regards to mothers and fathers and the elder, those that are older, and those that we have relationships are of our own age. He says, rebuke not an elder, in verse number one. He says, but entreat him as a father. And the younger, talking about the male, as a brother, as brethren. And for the older women, elder women, as mothers. And the younger as sisters, with all purity. And I thought about how that, listen, these ladies, you ladies, you deserve some things, and I'll come back to that in just a few moments. Let me count down. I want to give you seven things, first of all, seven things that mothers have said. Have Some of you mothers said something that was uh, uh, you wish your sons had paid attention to? Uh, seven things that mothers may have said. Christopher Columbus's mother said, I don't care what all you've discovered. You still could have taken time to sit down and write your dad and I a note. <laughs> Michelangelo's mother, can't you paint on the walls like other children? Paul Revere's mother said, I don't care where you think you have to go, young man. Midnight is past your curfew. Abraham Lincoln's mother said, again, another stovepipe hat. Can't you just wear a baseball cap like all the other kids? <laughs> Albert Einstein's mother. But it's your senior picture. Can't you do something about your hair? <laughs> uh, Jonah's mother. <laughs> Jonah's mother. That's a nice story, dear. Now tell me where you've really been the past three days. <laughs> and the seventh one is Thomas Edison's mother. Of course I'm proud of what you've invented and that you've got that light bulb, but turn it off and go to bed. <laughs> so there's seven comments that mothers may have made. 
countdown. Six thoughts. Six thoughts about mothers. The first thought is that the mother is to be loved. Now the Bible says husbands love your wives. So a wife should be loved as well. And he said that we're to love our wives even as ourselves. But mothers are to be loved. Now that's a natural thing. It's just a natural thing for mothers to be loved. As we looked at Romans chapter number 1 today and we talked about the heathen world and the condition of the heathen world and how that they had left their natural affection. Now they turned to other things and uh, I did not deal with those things in the auditorium Bible class but I'm just, I did say that there are those that depart from that which is natural. And it is a natural thing for us to love our mothers. We recognize who they are, we recognize what they've done. And I know that some mothers are kind of hard to deal with. And uh, my mother was a mountain woman, and I loved her. Now, she wasn't hard to deal with, but her son was hard to deal with. And her son created some real problems in her life, but I loved her, and I'm thankful for it. It's just a natural thing to love your mama, and we ought to love our mothers. Our mothers ought to be cherished. Not only did Paul say that husbands love their wives, even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it, he says that no man ever yet had hated his own flesh, but nourished and cherisheth it, even as the Lord, the church. That word nourish has to do with keep warm. It has to do with fostering. It has to do with child care. And so we're to love those women in our lives. And we're to cherish them. And we're to care for them. We're there to looking out after them. Anytime that we go to the store or someplace and the children are away from us, we keep one eye on them. That's, that's that word nourishing. That's keeping an eye on them, watching after them. A mother is to be respected. King David. What a wonderful story it is about David and how that God used that man in so many ways and yet that David himself was a man that had problems and failures in his own personal life. But he had a son and his son was Solomon. And Solomon, the wisest man that ever walked upon the face of the earth, gave great wisdom to his sons. And we find his writings right there in Proverbs just as we did in Proverbs chapter 31. But the Bible says something about his mother. And in 1 Kings chapter 2, the Bible says, Bathsheba therefore went unto the king Solomon to speak unto him for Adonijah. And the king rose up to meet her. Notice that it says that the king bowed himself unto her and sat down on his throne and caused a seat to be set for the king's mother and she sat at his right hand. It was a place of authority. But there was recognition that was made, and there was respect that was given unto his mother. And I think that that's a good thing. I think that's a good thought for all of us, that we recognize our moms and that we give respect unto our mothers. Number four, a mother ought to be obeyed. Proverbs chapter 6, Solomon said, My son, keep thy father's commandments. And forsake not the law of thy mother. And mothers, we ought to share some things. We ought to lay down the law to our children. We ought to teach them what the things that they need to learn. Number five is a mother ought to be honored. The Bible says of a husband, likewise ye husbands dwell with them. Talking about the wife. He says, according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel and as being heirs together of the grace and life that your prayers be not hindered. So if God has required this of a husband, what does he require of a son? Honor thy father and thy mother. And so this standard that God sets in the word of God is set for us to honor our father and mother. Now he says that there's some, there is some blessings that come along with that. 
And he said that our days may be long upon the earth. Just six simple thoughts. Six simple thoughts. And number six is that a mother ought to be praised. And back over in Proverbs chapter 31, and I made reference to this, the Bible says her children rise up and call her blessed and her husband also, and he praiseth her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Favor and dece- is deceitful, and beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Now, can I just tell you that we ought to put some things uh, to work in our lives about our mothers? And just to remind you today that you are to love her, you are to cherish her, you are to respect her, you are to obey her, you are to honor her, you are to praise her. There's coming a day when you'll not be able to do that. Number five, seven, six, five. Five mothers that I thought about that I thought we might should mention. Number one is Eve, the mother of all living. She was a completer. She was a helpmate. She sinned a great sin because of deception. She led her husband in the wrong way. But God blessed her. Hannah, I mentioned her. She was burdened for a child, so she prayed. She served God. She said to Eli, when Eli thought that she was drunken and her lips were moving, but he heard no voice coming from her lips, she said, I'm not a daughter of Belial. She honored her word. She brought Samuel back and lent him to the Lord. A couple that we may not know right off of hand, one is Gomer. Gomer was an unusual woman because she was a great sinner. She was a harlot. And one of the books of the Bible written by her husband, and God said to Hosea, you go down and you take a wife of the harlots. Think about that. She may have been a great sinner, but she was greatly loved. And she was loved by her husband and by her children, and she was greatly blessed even though that she returned back to that lifestyle. What? Yes. I say that she was greatly blessed because her husband went down and brought her back again. Think about that for a moment. Another mother stands out in my mind. I love her story, and the name is Rizpa. Rizpa was not a wife. She was a concubine. So she sired, uh, she had children. She was a queen. She wasn't a wife. She was just part of King Saul's harem as his concubine. She was owned by the king. She was not a life partner. She did not have access to the things, the riches of the king. She was there just as a servant unto him. That word concubine meant that she would never have the same degree or the respect of other women of Israel, Rizpa. You'd have to go back and you'd have to read the story. She was a victim of those that did not respect the laws of God. But yet she stands out in my mind. Tell me the story of Rizpa. Come back another day. What about Mary? Mary was a young girl, yet she was highly favored. She was a virtuous girl and the mother of our Lord Jesus Christ. Five mothers, four points. My thoughts today is about mother and everyone has a mother. If you're here today, you have a mother, right? It was kind of funny. A couple of weeks ago, Ms. Jensen and I were in the mountains of Brevard, North Carolina, up in the Great Smoky Mountains with some of our teenagers out of the uh, high school. And they had uh, orientation. And they were asked that 
who had not been to the wilds before and uh, the wilds camp, youth camp. And then they asked uh, who has, uh, had been here a senior trip before and as one of the students still remained standing. And uh, so he made a little comment about how that this is their second year as a senior coming back to the wilds. And a little dry humor in that is it's found also in saying all of us have mothers. And those of you who don't have a mother, stand up. And, uh, well, my mom's not here, but all of us have mothers. And we, we need to recognize that. We remember. Uh, the Bible says, Jesus said that a woman, when she is travailed, has sorrow because her hour has come. And our, our mothers have travailed over us. And they have given us life. But there is something about a mother. And Jesus said, just as soon as that travail has come, as soon as she has delivered that child, she remembereth no more the anguish, but she has joy. She has joy. And a mother should joy over her children. And there are some difficult decisions that moms have to make sometimes in regards to children. And may God richly bless you if you're in a time and place where you're having to make some decisions. But we ought to be joyous over our children. The Bible says, happy is a man whose quiver is full of them. We're to rejoice over our children. Everybody has a mother. So let me get my fourth point up here. Everyone has a mother. Everyone is sin. No matter how good your mama is, no matter how good your mama was, no matter how good of Christian that your mother was, no matter how much service that your mother did, no matter what your mother taught you, every one of us are sinners. We kind of concluded that in our Bible study this morning, that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The psalmist said, the wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. Well, that proves that the Bible's not true, because a newborn cannot speak. How about that? You let that newborn want their mama. You find out what they can speak. Everyone is sin. Sin came into the world by one, and death by sin. But I'm thankful that by one, through Jesus Christ our Lord, that we have life. So everyone has a mother. Everyone is sinned. Number three, everyone needs a second birth. There was anguish. There was travail whenever we came into the world for the first time. And my friend, I want you to know that there was anguish. There was travail. There was pain. There was suffering in order for us to be able to have a second birth. This is a spiritual birth. This is what church is all about. This is why Jesus Christ came. This is why the Word of God has been given unto us. So that we might know that God loves us even though that we are sinners how that he provided his only begotten son for us, that we might be able to have eternal life. How that he has taken and given us the Holy Spirit of God, seal us under the day of redemption. Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, but that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. And we sit here today because we've been born of the flesh. But my question is, have you been born of the Spirit? Have you been born again? Everyone needs a new birth. You say, well, Pastor, I'm going I'm to face this my own way. My friend, I want you to know without Jesus Christ that you die and go to a devil's hell. A hell, a place that's been prepared for the devil and his angels. Not meant for mankind to go there because God has made all the provisions that we might not go there. Yet, in our own stubbornness and wickedness, the Bible says that men love darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. We won't come to the light lest we be reproved. John said, as many as receive him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. I am the son of Lee and Ola May, uh, Odom Ware. And when I was born again on April the 8th of 1973, I became a son of God. We need that birth. Number four, four points for you to consider today. Everyone has a mom. Everyone sinned. 
everyone needs a second death, a second birth. And And number four, no one knows the hour of death. You don't know when you're going to depart. Where's Darius? <laughs> Darius was one of those young people that we had up in the, in the mountains of North Carolina. Stand up, Darius. This is what you get for not working in the children's ministry. You have to stand by yourself. Kevin's already gone back there, but Kevin was another one of our teens that was up there. I told Darius and four other guys, I said, we went whitewater rafting. And I said, this will be the worst boat on the river. And they said, why? And I said, because you will not listen. And so I'm in the back of this boat, and I'm saying, I need left, I need right. Let's paddle together, stroke, stroke, stroke. We did pretty good, didn't we, Darius? We only spun that boat around a couple of times. <laughs> now, that wasn't bad. We had girls that were there with us, and they had a professional guide in the back of that boat, and they kept spinning that boat around all the time. They went down <laughs> just about the entire river, didn't you? Yes. <laughs> now, we come to the last set of rapids. And they actually stop everybody and get everybody out of their boats and get everybody ready. You're going to go into these rapids and you need to understand what you're doing. And I told these guys, quit your horse playing. Stop yelling at each other. Pay attention. Listen to what I have to say. And we were lining that boat up to go through the rapids and we hit this big, big boulder that was there on the side of the rope, uh, side of the, uh, the, the, uh, river and it launched that young man right there <laughs> you can be seated but I'm not finished <laughs> Sherlanda you should have seen him he and Kevin they told us if you fall into the river remember Nose and toes exposed. Nose and toes exposed. Everybody say that. Nose and toes exposed. And they said, just remember that. If you fall into the river, nose and toes exposed. When those two boys hit the river, they didn't care about noses. They didn't care about toeses. They didn't care about exposes. They wanted back in that boat. And they did everything that they could to get back in that boat. But the problem was, is that we were entering into the rapids. And they were bobbing, we were bobbing. It was, it was a, was it a scary time, Darius? It was a scary time for all of us. We got them back into the boat. We finally got over to the shore. Our rafting is over with. And Darius said, I thought I was going to die. <laughs> and I told him, boast not thyself for tomorrow. <laughs> for no man knows what a day may bring forth. You may enter the rapids this afternoon. Death is going to happen one day. You don't know when it's going to be. I don't know when it's going to be. But I'll tell you, I think that we should make preparations for it. It's appointed unto man once to die, but after this, the judgment. You're going to die one day, and you're going to stand before God. Are you going to stand there in your own righteousness? Or are you going to stand there in the righteousness of Jesus Christ? See, the Bible says that God made him, Jesus, to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we, the sinners, might be made, not become, not become. Our brother was talking about the King James Bible 
just earlier, and he and I were chatting. And if you don't have a King James Bible, your Bible may read become. Uh, we don't become righteous. We are made righteous. It is a created act. God makes us righteous. Oh, you think you're righteous, Pastor? Not in your eyes, not in my eyes, but in the eyes of God I am. Because of what Jesus Christ has done. And I've trusted Him. See, I've said, Lord, I want you to take my place. And He took my place. I took His. What a wonderful thing it is, salvation. Three. There are three that are working on your behalf today. Probably the most common Bible verse is John 3.16. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. Peter talks about salvation is not by tradition. Salvation is by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that the Father before the foundation of the world ever laid he made provisions for us to be able to go to heaven before the world began God made that provision well, Pastor Jesus wasn't crucified until 2,000 years ago I know and the Bible says that he was manifested in these last days for you and for me so that we could see it. But in God's mind, it had already been taking place. There are three that are working on your behalf. The Bible says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who gave himself for me. John chapter 10, Jesus said, no man takes my life. He said, I lay it down on myself. Christ Jesus came into the world, Paul said, to save sinners. What a wonderful thing to think. That Jesus Christ came and gave himself for us. Why? Because he loved us. Because he wanted us to have an eternal home in heaven. And he said, you can't get there without my help. And there is three. Three and one. The Holy Spirit of God. In John chapter 16, chapter 14, 15, 16 of John, Jesus is had the uh, upper room there with his disciples, and he's teaching his disciples. He took, his, took his, uh, his girdle off, and he washed the disciples' feet and, and dried their feet with his girdle there, and he sat with them, and he said, one's going to betray me, and who is it? Is it I? Is it I? And, and he, he, he says to Peter, you're going to deny me? In chapter 14, it, he's coming to the end of that segment of his life of eating with his disciples and he said let not your heart be troubled you believe in God believe also in me that's John chapter 14 and verse number one now his teaching goes on until chapter 17 in chapter 17 Jesus enters into the garden of Gethsemane and there he prays for us and that's another great message in itself but chapter 14 15 and 16 one of the main teachings that is found in those three chapters is the work of the Holy Spirit of God. Jesus said that he's another comforter that he's going to send to you. He says that he is going to, not only going to be with you, he's going to dwell in you. The Lord has promised he would never leave us nor forsake us. How does he do that? He does that, he does, he does that through the Spirit of God. He does that through the Holy Spirit of God. I've been in South Carolina too much. And, uh, but in, in John chapter 16 and in verse number 8, Jesus said that when the Spirit of God has come, that he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. That the Spirit of God is going to work and the Spirit of God is going to let you know you're a sinner. 
He's going to let you know that, listen, you're going to die. You're going to be judged one day. And the Spirit of God will let you know that there is righteousness that is found at the grace of an almighty God. If you'll come unto him. Number two. Seven, six, five, four, three, two. There are two that are praying for you today, right now. There are two that are praying for you today. The Bible says of Jesus, wherefore he is able to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing that he ever liveth, making intercession for you. That today, right now, Jesus is praying for you. I don't know what your situation is. Maybe you're in a point in your life, you just feel like, the man, I, I just don't have any direction whatsoever. Jesus is praying for you. Maybe you're sitting here today and you say, man, I tell you what, I've made a mess out of my life. Jesus is praying for you. Maybe you're sitting here today and you say, preacher, if I were to die today, if that day of death came today, I wouldn't go to heaven. Jesus is praying for you right now. Jesus is praying for you. And in just a moment, I'm going to pray for you. Several years ago, a little gospel song came out. And it's somebody's praying. And I, I love it. Because it talks about somebody's praying for you. I came to Orlando, the Tabernacle Baptist Church, May the 19th of 1981. On Saturday night, my wife and I were at the founding pastor's house. My brother founded this ministry in 1966. And we were there at the house, and he said, Steve, I'm going over to the office to pray. Do you want to go with me? And I said, yes. And we came over here and went into his office, and he said, let's just pray and ask God to bless services tomorrow. And we got out on our knees, and I prayed, and he prayed. Before he finished his prayer, he said, now, Lord, would you help Mickey and Jerry? I don't know what their spiritual life is like, but would you help them? Would you save Jerry? Lord, he needs to be saved. Would you help Larry and Kathy? Would you bless Pat and Joe? Would you help Mark and Christy? And I realized something. He's praying for his siblings. And I wonder how many times that, that man got on his face before God and prayed for his little brother, Stevie. Somebody's praying for you today. What are you going to do? Number one, there's only one way. Neither is there salvation in any other. There's none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father but by me. Only way through Jesus. It's the only way. It's the only way. But for those of us that are believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, we make a mess out of our lives sometimes, don't we? And you know, the Bible says that if we'll confess our sins, that he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And do you know how he does that? He doesn't do that through the pastor. He does not do that through a priest. He 
does not do that through a ritual. He does not do that through an act which we do. Well, I tell you what, I really messed up, Pastor. So I feel bad about it, so I'm going to give you $100. Well, I wish you'd feel bad about it more often. <laughs> that doesn't do anything for you. That doesn't do anything for you. It's not through the church. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get myself right. I'm going to get back into church, Steve. What's that going to do for you? I'm going to dedicate myself to the church. What's that going to do for you? He cleanses us from all unrighteousness through Jesus Christ. One way. Bow with me for a word of prayer. Mamas can pray. Mamas ought to pray. But mamas can't do anything for you. But there's only one person that can make a difference in your life, and that's you. And I'm not talking about turning over a leaf. I'm talking about turning to Jesus Christ. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed, no one looking about just for a moment. I wonder if there's someone here today, heads are bowed, who says, Pastor, God spoke to my heart this morning. Maybe it's through a song, maybe it's through something that was somebody else said, maybe it's through the reading of the scriptures. Would you say, Pastor, God spoke to my heart this morning. Preacher, would you pray for me? Would you just slip your hand up just long enough for me to see it? so that I might be able to intelligently pray. God bless you. Somebody else? God bless you. Pastor, God spoke to my heart this morning. I wonder if there's somebody here today, and you say, Preacher, to be honest with you, if I were to die today, I don't know for sure I'd go to heaven. Pastor, would you pray for me? You're not sure. I'd love to pray with you. I'd love to pray for you. Would you slip your hand up? Hands up. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Pastor, I don't have that assurance this morning. Would you pray for me? God bless you. I'll pray with you. I'll pray for you. Now, I promised you there was two praying for you today. My Heavenly Father, as I bow, Lord, I ask you that somehow, some way, that the Spirit of God would help us. May we see something from the word of God today that would help us, that would strengthen us, make us more like you today than we were yesterday. Lord, give us that grand assurance that we're going to heaven to determine in our hearts that we're going to live for you. Would you help us this day? Lord, these hands that were raised I ask you that you would please work in their hearts and in their lives for your sake, for their sake. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Let's stand together, heads bowed, eyes closed. Heads bowed, eyes closed. No one looking about just for a moment. Miss Kelly's going to begin to play an invitational hymn for us. If God has spoken to your heart, I would like to be able to help you. But I can't help you if I don't know. I have Brother Murnane and Brother Sequish here. If you'll step out of your seats and come, my friend, they will, they will help you. They'll pray with you, pray for you, whatever your need is. Pastor, I'm not sure about heaven. Let's make it sure today. Pastor, God spoke to my heart. Let's make it sure today. Preacher, only get my heart right with the Lord. Let's, let's make it sure today. Have some who've come to like to unite with Tabernacle Baptist Church by way of transfer of membership. And we're very happy about that. Whatever your need is, heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Piano's playing. Some have already gathered around here to pray. Others, you want to come? 
you want to come in the name of the church. Someone else? say there's fighting and fears within and without we have to step over those sometimes it's called humbling yourselves and you just have to come my heavenly father I thank you for the day I thank you for our time together Lord again I thank you for these who have knelt at these steps and I pray that you would bless them Father, I pray that you would hear the prayers. I pray that you would answer their prayers. May they see your hand at work. Father, would you glorify yourself? And as we, as we see you work, Father, it strengthens our faith. We know that you're able. I'm thankful for the attentiveness of these people. I pray that you'd bless them because of the time that they've spent here today. Have your sweet will and way, I ask. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Would you be seated just for a moment, just for a quick moment? We have a family that's come to unite with Tabernacle Baptist Church, and this is the Benella family. And it's great to have them with us. And Steve has been here longer than the family. And uh, so Steve has become a pretty common fixture around here, and I'm thankful for him. They visited with us uh, back last year before the hurricanes came through. And, uh, and they said they were thinking about moving to Orlando, and I said, well, won't you just come to work for me? And he said, well, I don't think I want to do that. He did not, but uh, the Lord worked it out, and I'm thankful for that. So Steve uh, and Barbara, you come stand right here. This is uh, Brother Steve Benella and, and his lovely wife, Barbara. And then they've got three of their children that are coming as well. And this is Abby. Come stand with your mom. And this is Grace. And this is Eva. And so here is this lovely family coming to unite with us by transferring their letter from Seneca Bible Baptist Church in Auburn, New York. All those in favor of receiving them in the fellowship of the church, let it be known by the raising of the hand. And any opposed like sign? I was teasing Steve this week. He's been outside painting. He's darkening up real quick. <laughs> he shows he's not been in much sun there in Auburn, New York. I want the Tabernacle Baptist Church family to come by and welcome them into the church, love on them, get to know them, and uh, get their names right. I still have trouble because of some way my brain works. Again, I thank you for being here. Let's stand together to be dismissed from the word of prayer. Your children went out for junior church. Make sure you go by and pick them up. My Father, thank you for this family. Bless them. And Father, I pray that you would help us as we work together for your glory right here in this city. Again, I thank you for these that are here. Bless us as we go our separate ways. Father, may this be a wonderful Mother's Day for all of our moms. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Brother Zam, you go back to your table back there in the back. Stop by his table. Get a prayer card. Be back tonight at 6 o'clock. Good day. God bless.